we sing and dance with the crowds as we enter the city. Joyfully we share the light of God that is among us. In our tradition, the time of rest begins with the lighting of a candle. In this moment, the stopping truly begins. To take a few breaths to allow the mind to quieten. This is the beginning of sacred time. He knows and chooses so anyway. He knows how fickle our love, how fleeting our kindness. We reject what we most deeply desire, condemn what we most deeply need. Our glory and our ruin both clamour into that very wound he rides into the deepest divide of our souls on the scorned way into the scorn itself he rides into the choice between love and the way of the world and into our failure to choose well he rides having chosen to prevail in the battle between good and evil between love and fear. One must embrace them both and enter the cleft and still choose. Worship the one who embraces our beauty and our woundedness, who forgives the failure of our worship. Come with him on the foolish way, the way of love and fail, and be forgiven, and come again. Amen.
Matthew 21, verses 7 to 17. After the disciples laid their cloaks on the animals, Jesus mounted and rode towards the city. Great crowds of people spread their cloaks on the road, while some began to cut branches from the trees and lay them along the path. The crowds, those who went in front of Jesus and those who followed, were all shouting, Hosanna to the heir to the house of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Most High. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred to its depths, demanding, Who is this? And the crowd kept answering, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. When Jesus entered the temple, he drove out all those who were selling and buying there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those selling doves. He said to them, Scripture says, My house is called the house of prayer, but you make it a den of thieves. Those who were blind or couldn't walk came to him in the temple, and he healed them. When the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things that Jesus did, and heard of the children shouting, Hosanna to the heir to the house of David, throughout the temple area, they became indignant. Do you hear what the children are shouting? they asked him. Yes, Jesus replied. Have you never read from the mouths of children and nursing babies you have brought forth praise? After leaving them, he went out to Bethany to spend the night. The portrait of Jesus in the Gospels has often proven to be something of a conundrum for interpreters through the years. What we see in our reading today is the Jesus in a violent rage driving animals and people out of the temple. Years ago, Bruce Barton, in what became a very popular book called The Man Nobody Knows, used the story to demonstrate how virile this Jesus was. He surmised that Jesus was capable of Herculean strength and prowess because of his outdoorsy lifestyle and vigorous walking missionary tours. Make of that what you will. However, others have been concerned that this public demonstration, which had all the earmarks of a near riot, was to say the least, most unbecoming of the normal lifestyle of Jesus. Also, if this episode were a peak of temper, could not someone accuse Jesus of being guilty of sin? Our search for the ways Jesus expresses and experiences anger has revealed, not surprisingly I think, a human being who radically exudes integrity, strength and vision, one who models confidence in his mission, indignation over injustice and love in the midst of aggravation. Throughout the Gospel accounts, Jesus' demonstrations of anger reveal his authenticity. He doesn't play games, he isn't passive-aggressive or obsequious, he doesn't stuff his anger holding it in until breaking point. Rather, he is clear and direct and utterly righteous 
in his anger. So we've gleaned some answers to the question that confronted us. Jesus demonstrates different kinds of anger, ranging from peak and frustration to exasperation and furious righteous indignation. Anger can be destructive or constructive, harmful or holy. Jesus models a way to express anger in ways that can be illuminating as well as instructive. Jesus expresses anger in direct, honest ways. He will not be swayed from his mission. He is bold and clear in his message. He responds to attacks directly. Sometimes he uses anger to try to shake some spiritual sense into others, though often he realises the effort is useless. So he expresses his judgement of hypocrisy, greed and self-aggrandizement, particularly of those who are charged with the care of the souls of the people. Jesus states his case unambiguously in spite of opposition. You note he never makes a personal attack, but seeks to uncover the evil behind the actions. There's no record of Jesus being angered by a personal offence or slight, no matter how wrong, unjust or violent it may be. He teaches that the one who is persecuting us is also created in the image of God and loved by God, and that in reality we can love our enemy. At the same time, just as he is righteously angered over oppression and injustice, so should we be. Jesus' mission is to liberate human souls, to draw them into the way of Christ, into a loving, selfless way of life. He is after what matters, and so he reveals dishonesty, fights injustice and subjugation, causes change, sets things right. And undergirding every expression of his anger is love. Jesus speaks the truth in love. In every case, the anger of Jesus is the passion of love. His love of God, his zeal for the ways of his teachings, his mission to open the way of Christ to all, together make him indignant at whatever is dishonourable and whatever impedes others from knowing and experiencing the divine presence. He's honest with his feelings, expresses them as directly and as transparently as possible, and moves on. Jesus responds to anger in others by calmly explaining his position. He possesses an unshakable force of honesty and truth. He stands up to angry attacks without getting drawn in to fierce, thoughtless, tit-for-tat encounters. He understands that one's anger is very often caused by fear and takes that into account when he's the object of a violent outburst. He's transparent in his response to every challenge and refuses to yield his position. He explains who he is and what he's about with an utter openness and also outspokenness. So maybe Jesus' teachings regarding anger overturn our assumptions. If you are persecuted, if you are the focus of others' anger for righteousness' sake, then you are blessed, he tells us. So be joyful. If you are angry with a brother or a sister, deal with it and be reconciled. Make that a priority even before worship. He teaches a model of peaceful non-violence that many throughout history have attempted to follow, even today. He recognises that there is a place for righteous anger, as he himself has shown, but he urges us to be angry without causing harm or seeking destruction. And he tells us that there can be a cost for making such a righteous stand. Nevertheless, he encourages us to live a life of pure, authentic love and integrity. 
God is love. Jesus is love. The anger of Jesus and all holy anger is the anger of love. For love is not holy sympathy and sweetness. Love sometimes is full of indignation and wrath. We light this candle in remembrance and hope to call to mind Magnus and Ronald and all the saints and all those dear to us who have gone before, especially those who have died in recent times. And as a sign of hope to future generations as yet unborn, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. prayer. The healer touching all sorts, responding to the leper, forgiving the prostitute, going into the rooms of the dead and bringing life back to the forgotten, the woman with the blood flow, the daughter of Jairus, the man by Siloam's pool, the beggar by the roadside. The table turner, ruining the tradition of centuries of sacrifice and purity, of paying the temple tax and being set free from sin. Den of robbers, place of thieves. This should be a house of prayer. Table Turner The Saviour, a prisoner without a crime, who takes love where it is often found, at the edge of death. For the sake of others. Suffering in the name of others. Crucify. Bread breaker. We want Barabbas. King of the Jews. the resurrection and the life. On a beach at dawn, cooking fish in the sunrise, watching the disciples take on the look of surprise and faith. stone roller. I will not believe until I see. 
Ghost Walker. Fish Fryer. Jesus. The Christ. Amen. Let us go gladly on our way, as those who have recognised the Palm Sunday man as the key to the healing of the world. Let us translate our hosannas in the language of daily loving, that each task and each person may receive the best we can offer in those circumstances. Hosanna, wonderful is he who comes in the name of the Lord. May you stay safe in the way of Christ and may you be blessed by his Spirit this day and always. Amen. <laughs>